everyone can hear me? Good, great. Uh, no, no, it, it isn't working. Um, okay, it, it is working, okay. Am I, am I supposed to keep it like this? this will like this? Is it kind of better? Okay, I will keep it like this. <laughs> okay, great. Timer. So, well, thank you for having me. And uh, I will be presenting joint work with Anders Mölberg about cubicle synthetic homotopy theory. That is um, synthetic homotopy theory with cubicle type theory. So first, some uh, reminders or some explanations about uh, homotopy type theory in general. Uh, one of its motivations in is to um, be able to do synthetic reasoning about spaces through dependent type theory, marginless uh, dependent type theory. Um, so the usual interpretations goes like this, uh, a type would be a space, uh, terms of type A would be points inside the corresponding space, uh, propositional equality proofs between A and B would be paths between the two corresponding points, uh, proof of s proofs of equalities between equalities would be homotopies, and so on for higher homotopies, etc. So please note that uh, I'm using triple equal for propositional equality, which is not really common, but it's a convention in cubicle like that, and that will be important later on. Okay, so this homotopy type theory uh, interpretations, uh, well, in general homotopy type theory, relies on two things. The first one being the univalence axiom, uh, which is an axiom, so it's kind of bad. Uh, in it this axiom tells us that uh, well, equality between types are equivalences, but it's not too important. And uh, higher inductive types that are some kind of variants of uh, inductive types uh, that allow us to also add constructors for propositional equalities. So here, um, the higher inductive types is uh, some kind of circle with a base point here and uh, a propositional equality between that point and itself. And since propositional equalities are path, that means there is a loop. Okay. So these two uh, constructs have the problem of not having nice computational content, which means you might get terms that are stuck, like a closed term of type uh, integer, which will not reduce to a, a nice integer. And um, there comes cubicle type theory to fix this. So the motto of cubicle type theory could be to take uh, topological intuition seriously. Um, and for one, we replace uh, our equality with actual paths. That is, I, I just explained that uh, equalities, propositional equalities are paths in the standard interpretation of HOT. Well, in cubicle type theory, you get an actual interval type I that has two endpoints, I0 and I1. And um, then a proof of a propositional equality between two points, well, two terms, A and B, uh, will be an actual function from that interval to our type A um, that is definitionally equal to A uh, in the first extremity and definitionally equal to B in the second one. So yeah, I am using normally call for definitional equality. So, yeah. And so since we replaced our usual inductive equality with um, this weird interval type, we need new stuff to eliminate equality. Before we, um, in Martin Love type theory, we usually use uh, what is called the J eliminator that uh, allows us to use um, equality proofs. Well, in cubicle type theory, um, this J eliminator is replaced with two primitives, which is composition, um, which allows us to take three matching paths, that is uh, three paths, the first one being that one, uh, and uh, the end point of the first one corresponds to uh, the starting point of the second path, and the end point of the second path matches with the starting point of the third path. So given um, 
such an open box. You can build, uh, if you feed that data to um, composition, the composition primitive, you will get um, a map from the square to our type A, and the square being uh, just the Cartesian product of the interval with itself. Uh, and so on uh, in higher dimensions, likewise from five matching maps from uh, squares to our type. If the, um, these matching maps form an open cube, then you can fill that cube. Um, and yeah. So this, is, uh, this, has, uh, this has a good property, well, property, no. This, has, uh, this is nice because this is quite close to um, really common uh, properties uh, in homotopy theory. Well, this is really close to what a uh, topologist would like to work with, unla unlike the J eliminator, which confuses uh, math people. Um, and uh, the other primitive that will replace the J eliminator is transport. Um, and um, the input data of this primitive are, is a, a type family on the interval. So, so that is a term of type I to type, yeah. And um, a point above I zero. And given that data, uh, our transport primitive will build a term of type for all I in the interval. Then you have a proof of P of I, that is um, a point in every fiber of, um, of this map. Okay. So um, this cubical type theory has um, nicer properties than uh, homotopy type theory, uh, namely that it satisfies univalence without breaking computation. So it satisfies, uh, as in it is not an, axi an axiom anymore, and um, without breaking computational properties, meaning that uh, every closed term of type integer will actually reduce to a, a proper integer. So this is done using glue type, but I will not delve into, into this because uh, I have not, not enough time. Okay. So um, this is only for the univalence part, right? But uh, cubical type theory also provides its own version of um, higher inductive types. And um, these are work pretty much like the ones uh, in homotopy type theory, except that uh, constructors for equalities now become uh, constructors for maps from the interval into S1. Well, in this example, it is S1, but in general, this is S1. Anyway, um, so now loop is uh, an actual map from the interval to S1. And uh, so you can instantiate, instantiate this map um, on any point of the interval, uh, and um, in particular at the extremities of an interval. And uh, it has a nice property to definitionally reduce to, um, to base when we uh, instantiate it to uh, an extremity of the interval. Okay, so just uh, yeah, the, the quick summary, higher inductive types in cubical type theory have nice computational properties. That's like the general thing about cubical type theory. And they also have much simpler elimination principles. So um, uh, higher inductive types like uh, regular inductive types have elimination principles, right? So if we are given uh, a dependent family on the circle, yeah, I wrote U, but this is uh, the universe of type. So if we have a dependent family on the circle and we want to build a term of type for all X in S1, then P of X. Uh, in homotopy type theory, you would, um, you would need two things, uh, one for every constructor. So in an inhabitant of P of base, which is normal, and this one, which is a little less intuitive, especially since transport is not primitive in hot and it has to be defined through the J eliminator. So this is not what you would uh, write without uh, having to think about it at least for a few minutes. Well, in my case. Uh, and uh, with more complicated higher inductive types, then it gets, it gets even more weird and not necessarily easy to, 
to write the correct union result. Well, okay, not that hard either. But uh, with cubicle type theory, it is really straightforward. You give uh, an, an inhabitant in P of base, and for all, every i, you give an inhabitant of P of loop i, and that's it. Um, so, this is all nice and well, and um, this cubicle type theory has several implementation as of now, and the most polished maybe being uh, cubicle agda. And so, um, uh, homotopy type theory, since uh, its, its invention, has been used by the community with great success to formalize a good chunk of uh, standard homotopy theory. Like, uh, I listed a bunch of results here. Um, and now that we actually have uh, another type theory that allows us to reason about spaces with better properties and proof assistants that are able to to use uh, this cubicle type theory, then, well, it only remains to do some topology with it, right? So this is our contribution, and um, we proved a bunch of uh, standard topology results with cubicle type theory and showing how the good properties of cubicle type theory can be used to, to give like different proofs, uh, more efficient proofs and stuff like that uh, compared to homotopy type theory. Uh, for instance, every proof that will have to deal with higher inductive types will be uh, drastically um, compacted, like in the, the example of the three by three lemma for pushouts, it gets from 2,000 lines to 200 lines or something like that, which is quite nice. And um, also, the, um, the more, I don't know, I wouldn't say down to earth, but uh, close to topology feel of cubicle type theory allows from uh, less, less astute, yes? Ah, five minutes, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm done. Uh, so, yeah, since, the, since cubicle type theory is, feels closer to uh, regular topology, uh, it is not necessarily to be as creative to uh, prove results from homotopy theory. Like the Hopf vibration, which is a complicated topology fact relating uh, spheres and vibrations, whatever. Uh, when it was first proved uh, in homotopy type theory, it kind of created a surprise, like lots of experts weren't expected that it would actually be possible to prove that. And yeah, it was really quite a feature, uh, quite a feat and um, really impressive. While in cubicle type theory, you basically you write what every topologist would write and it sort of works, so which is nice. Yeah, so I won't go into scary stuff like the hop vibration, but just to give you uh, a feel of how it works, I will just um, explain how to prove that a torus is a product of two circles. So a torus is like uh, the favorite example of topology. It's like every, uh, every presentation by, uh, about homotopy type theory will have a torus in it. That's like uh, a theorem. And um, so a, a torus can be defined as a higher inductive type yeah, don't worry too much about the syntax, but um, so it is uh, the data of a point, uh, two lines. So line one is uh, the yeah the yellow one, and line two is the pink one, and a square that is the surface of the torus. Um, and we want to prove that such a torus is equal to the product of um, two circles. So how do we do this? First, we have the univalence action, which tells us we only have to prove um, an isomorphism between the two, and then convert it to inequality using univalence, right? So to do this, well, this is the data uh, required to define an isomorphism, a map from the torus to the product of circles, a map from the product of circles to the torus, and um, canceling homotopies. So to do the first one, well, how do we define a map from the torus to something? Since it is a higher inductive type, higher inductive type, 
we can use pattern matching here. So, yeah, we just have to define the image of these four base cases. And, um, well, this is really straightforward. Straightforward. Uh, yeah, we send the first line to uh, a loop on the first circle, the second line to a loop in the second circle, and then the surface will be corresponding to the surface uh, in the product of the two circles, right? Uh, yeah, and I, I should also mention that um, when doing that, uh, Agda always makes, makes sure that um, um, okay, that the image we give uh, satisfy some constraints because since uh, line one, when uh, i is equal to i zero or i is equal to i one, uh, it reduces to point, then um, it has to be true that uh, the image, when we put in i zero or i one, it, uh, it, it actually reduces to that one. But Agda takes care of all these checks for us, and yeah, this is painless. So for the other direction, this is pretty much the same. We just swap uh, left and right. And since everything computes, well, to, to give the canceling homotopies, we just put reflexivity everywhere, and it works. Uh, obviously, this example is kind of a toy baby example, because like there's no actual content uh, mathematical content in there, proving that the uh, choice is product of two circles. But well, this is nice to to have this um, as straightforward as we want it to be, because in homotopy type theory, it is not uh, the most sh the, the shortest proof we know. I think is about 150 lines. So this is the general state of the uh, of the thing. Yeah. Some, so here is a, a table uh, comparing several uh, results. I only put uh, results that have kind of, that are kind of self-contained because it would have been interesting to put the hop vibration too, but uh, it is done in a very different way in typical Agda and in uh, hot Agda and yeah, kind of, well, it didn't work out well. But anyway, yeah, you can see that um, Proof of statements that uh, are reli reliant on higher identity types get uh, really uh, drastically cut down to uh, yeah, maybe a factor of 10 or so. Uh, however, proofs that um, are just standard homotopy manipulation stay about the same. Like these two are not significantly shorter. Um, but yeah, everything that worked in homotopy type theory will work as well in typical type theory, maybe with a uh, formulation that will be closer to topology, and stuff that, uh, yeah, and some stuff will be actually much improved. So, as a conclusion, uh, yeah, we, we replaced the, the standard, uh, well, all, well, we replaced what makes hot to with, um, I don't know, different stuff. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. So we went from hot to cubicle type theory and uh, replacing every um, important thing uh, with a new version. And it yields an easier treatment of uh, synthetic homotopy theory, uh, especially when higher inductive types are involved. And um, it also gives um, a way to to, to do proofs that are more topology oriented and which will hopefully please uh, math people who want to, to verify topology. And, um, and so the cubicle Agda library is quickly, I don't know, but is catching up on, um, on the hot libraries. And all these computation properties would theoretically allow us to um, solve problems that the community has been trying to solve for a long time, especially Brunner's number. So in theory, we now have enough machinery to, to say, okay, if you just 
uh, start Agda and uh, tell, uh, tell it to, in, to, to reduce this term, then it will compute Brunery's number, but it turns out it stacks overflow. Uh, yeah, and the Brunery number is like a standard, well, a, a thing we w really want to compute, but nobody has succeeded yet. And yeah, thank you for listening. Any questions? Uh, can I ask about the tall example where you prove that the torus is the product of two uh, circles? Uh, uh, so, in this proof, you you don't touch the interior of the, I mean, like the surface of the yeah. two objects at all. This is the surface, right? This is the surface yes. of the torus. Oh. And, and so is the the pair that contains the loops of the first circle and the sort of second circle. Right, oh. and uh, so since we, circles are just a point in the line, but if when we take the product of the two of them, then we get a surface, right? If you, uh, this, okay. this thing has two parameters, so it is a surface. So I'm, I'm wondering if, if you have a way to puncture the surface. Let's say you remove one point on it, then what would be the course? Like, is there a way to to map this this new surface where you puncture one point to something similar in terms of the two circles? Right. So if you puncture the surface, then you can just not put the surface at all in the definition because up to homotopy, uh, pinching a hole in the surface is just the same as completely removing it, and then you just get the two circles, right? You, uh, a wedge product of the two circles, right? Is Thanks. Is what you're asking? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Has there been any work to translate hot agda to cubical agda? Because it should be possible in theory, but right. the so engineering effort might be quite uh, large. Yes, I think it's true. So. Um, there are some uh, equalities that hold in hot, but do not in cubical, well, do not strictly hold in cubical type theory, especially, well, the only one being the J eliminator that computes on reflexivity. Right, but th there is like a, a trick to give a different equality type that will have uh, this rule. And so using this, there is indeed uh, a way to translate hot proofs into cubical proofs, and it actually works. I, I don't know to which extent it works, like if uh, the whole thing can be translated, but like uh, it has been done from for several proofs, yes. Automatically, yes. Uh, some stuff involved in the Brunnery number computation. So first, uh, we tried, uh, well, Anders tried uh, translating them automatically and then just try, um, yeah, um, starting Agda on them to reduce, but it didn't work. So then we uh, gave a more cubical proof, uh, hoping that it would be much simpler and would actually compute, but it did not. Okay, we have to move on to the next speaker. Let's thank okay. Luke again. Saying something? Yeah. 
Oké, okay, de next speaker is Fred.